Diner rules supreme. Today I picked up this uh, DVBT stick at the post office. And um, yeah, had a quick look at it. And uh, there are some things on the, that are quite hilarious. So I'll just go over it, uh, give you a quick introduction. Many of you may know this stick. Uh, it's a box standard SDR chip. Because it's real cheap, it's easily available. I paid uh, like $7 for it, and I think that's even a ripoff. So here we go. Um, it features the, the RTL uh, 2832. Uh, that's just a Realtek uh, chip. And uh, the Raphael Micro R82T2. That's the RF front end. Uh, it's a, a 40 to 1006, I think, megahertz um, receiver chip. It does um, the, the IF mixing and some gain control. And it has a really interesting data sheet. Um, actually, the data sheet covers many things in detail that are not covered in this uh, PCB layout design, such as uh, the I squared C traces that shouldn't run under the, 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 the crystal, and um, yeah, some, some general things like this, uh, these inductors that uh, have some mutual inductance owed to their traces running under, under one another. I'm not sure what to make of that either. And there are other funky things like the, the differential pair from the USB trace that is actually not so diff routed here. It's routed as single la uh, lanes. And it's very asymmetric because on the one side it's just bounded by ground plane. And on the other side you can see it's, uh, it's bounded by uh, filter components. And um, you'll have to check out the data sheet. I'll go into that in another video. Uh, what these actually are. Uh, they may be for, for PLL loop stability, and uh, that's, that's basically not a good thing. So concluding with another few funky things, uh, as, as far as uh, PCB layout goes, you can see that there are three uh, farad bit, or two farad beads on one capacitor that have distinctly low amount of solder on their, on their fillets. So the toe fillets are uh, very de depleted. And you can see that there are suspicious uh, wire holes next to them. Uh, fortunately, they, they didn't uh, flip up, so no, to no tombstoning there. But you can see that uh, most of the tin is gone, apart from the rest of the, just a few, uh, just a, a fine a meniscus of tin that's uh, left uh, due to the surface tension and maybe the oxide layer that's beginning to form. And that is because uh, these vias, although the one here the one here appears to be tented somewhat by the, by the solder resist, still have uh, this, um, this wicking action, so they suck away the solder. Surprisingly, let's see if I can get this uh, right. No, I can't. But you can see that on the bottom side, most of the vias are closed. And even though they are closed, okay, the one has a, a little blowout hole, but even though they are closed, uh, that they still suck down the solder. So if you think, um, well, I'm going to have the VR tended on the bottom side. That's going to be fine enough. Um, apparently, no, it isn't. Depending on the diameter, you may still get some uh, wicking action there. And uh, that may lead to a low yield in PCB production. So a PCB assembly house will not like that. Yeah, concluding with uh, the solder job in general, you can see there are uh, the sides of the, the QFN pads. And uh, yeah, they're just cut pads. They are exposed copper, they are not pre-tinned, but usually you see that they are wetted by the tin uh, because the, the flux uh, usually cleans it up and then it's, uh, it's coated by tin. Not so much here, and it's, it gets even worse when you look at the real tech chip. There are just, um, just small pebbles of solder of squeezed out and not much more. But I think the bottom side will be fine, so that's a sort of okay job, could be better. Uh, funny remark here is um, they um, to, to, to push the chip down, uh, to, to generate a force that sucks the chip down and squeezes out the solder, which we can witness here, they actually uh, put an array of holes underneath the exposed pad, which you can also see here. That's uh, under the Raphael microchip. And yeah, that, uh, that usually sucks away most of the solder. You can maybe see the solder starting to run down via holes. And so you don't get this blob of solder that, that, that makes the chip float. But usually the, 
the manufacturer specify a, a certain pattern uh, with which you have to um, deposit the solder so it, um, it reflows evenly and the air gets squeezed out and it's not too much mass to begin with. Yeah. So in conclusion, it may work, but uh, yeah, maybe it's maybe the, the crystal oscillator is not that stable. Maybe there are some issues with USB timing, um, but there are more um, more hypothetical. This uh, design is proven to work. And maybe there are some there's some uh, yield issues, uh, so that a few of the boards won't work. But they catch this at the factory, and the rest is uh, just good enough, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, if I were to use this as an SDR, I think I might go actually with an external oscillator and uh, yeah, just, just inject the clock at the right pin and of course uh, swap this for, an, uh, for another antenna connector. The rest seems to be fairly decent though. Right, thanks for watching.